Hello students, welcome to my YouTube channel Edis English Literature. I am Ardhindu De. Today we are going to discuss the features of Renaissance in literature as it happens in the Elizabethan period. In our discussion we will try to understand the European Renaissance spirit or the very ideology that influenced Elizabethan England. I mean life, culture, literature and policies of that time. I will give a brief overview of the characteristics of the Renaissance as it happens in Italy and we will also try to discuss the economic, the social and the political changes that began in the 14th century and uh, which was uh, later continued and which contributed to the redevelopment of the Renaissance. So let's talk about the Renaissance and its characteristics. But first, what is Renaissance? The word Renaissance means rebirth. The term Renaissance is an Italian word for Renaissance, was coined by the Italian painter Giorgio Vasari. He applied the concept of rebirth or this very concept of rebirth in the form of art. In fact, the idea of reincarnation arose from the belief that Europeans had rediscovered the superiority of Greek and Roman cultures in them. The Renaissance is a series of literary and cultural movements in the 14th 15th and 16th centuries. We can also relate Renaissance with that of the fall of Constantinople, the capital of Byzantine Empire by the Ottoman Empire in 1453. As the last Roman Empire fell, the Byzantine Greek scholars took refuge in other city-states in nearby Italy. This is considered by many scholars the key to the revival of Greek studies that led to the development of Renaissance humanism and science. The exodus of Greeks to Italy as a result of this event marked the end of the Middle Dark Ages and the beginning of the Renaissance. But that ready-made conclusion cannot be drawn so easily. But as a literary student, we must remember that the European Renaissance most probably began through this route, but there are many other factors. So the European civilization, which were uh, built up primarily on Greek ideologies, were shifted to the Roman Empire uh, and the last pocket of the Byzantine uh, regime that fell under Ottoman Empire where the refugees of the Greek scholars were residing. As Ottoman driven them out, so they uh, spread uh, from their end from uh, that uh, Byzantine Empire to, towards Italy, Italy, Florence, most probably Florence and other city-states that were favorable atmosphere for them. And the knowledge that was preserving at their hand mostly original text and um, had the opportunity to spread to the common people and the cultural atmosphere it enriched by that time and gradually uh, slow by slow uh, the atmosphere of the renaissance has been built up these movements began in italy and eventually spread to germany france england and other parts of europe The Renaissance took place between the 14th and possibly ending as late as the 17th century. In fact, it never ends but continues in new form in new names. The Renaissance took place because of a desire to change to a new way of thinking but they were caused by different sequences of events. The Renaissance looked 
towards a classical way of thinking which was still largely rational. The Renaissance that we popularly know all started in Italy. Uh, then it came in France and finally in England. The characteristics of Renaissance both in England and in Europe were similar. They can be felt in the fields of sociology, spiritual world and in the science. Freedom of thought and a broadened vision became the order of the day. Dogma in matters of fate or destiny and morals and social so-called middle-aged blacks disappeared. The church reformations questioned the authority of spiritual energy, the scientific discoveries and the astronomical and geographical queries of navigators, of astronomers created a sense of wonder and astonishment on the part of men and women. Classical literature of Rome and Greece was looked upon as very great and beautiful. During the Middle Ages, there was an exuberant interest in traditional writings, particularly Latin and Latin interpretations of Greek. In the Renaissance, individuals from different fragments of society, from rulers, from astrocats to traders to warriors, concentrated on old style writing and craftsmanship. Not at all like the expert researchers of the Middle Ages. Uh, but these individuals were novices who read up for joy. The Renaissance was marked by an intense interest in the visible world and in the knowledge delivered from concrete sensory experiences. The focus during the Renaissance turned from abstract discussions of religious issues to the morality of human actions. In the Renaissance, the unique talents and potential of the individual become significant. The attention given to the development of an individual's potentials during the Renaissance brought with it a new emphasis on education. So the individualism or the very talent in me is in focus in the field of education. Education was expanded. This was in stark contrast to the Middle Ages, when specialization had been uh, had been encouraged to a particular sect. But now education is expanded to all. Both the idea of historical revert and ceaselessly changing, particularly economical and political changes. For that were characteristic products of the Renaissance itself. Rebirth in the late 13th or early 14th centuries um, with the work of Italian painter Guido and Italian poet Dante Allegri, Petrarch began the classical view, free from the darkness and ignorance that they felt characterized the preceding era. These scholars of 14th and 15th century compared their own achievements to the glories of uh, ancient Rome and Greece. They applied humanistic learning to social and political life and encouraged patriotism. Later, the same spirit spread out throughout Europe and it also came into the English soul. Europe had changed dramatically by the 16th century. Particularly uh, noteworthy is the fact that Renaissance intellectuals believed their age marked a momentous turning point in history and that they were somehow fundamentally different from their medieval ancestors. Economical and political changes to happen in Europe during the Renaissance. For a long time after the breakdown of the Western Roman Empire around 500, the main solid binding 
this binding together power in Europe was the Roman Catholic Church. Presently, it is the right time to control this church. So whoever is in control of the church is in the power. Helping out parliament, for instance, Queen Elizabeth settled the charge in 1559 on a moderate course, of course. She killed the Scottish danger by assisting the Protestants. New perspective towards legislative issues went up with the new types of political associations and the church was ousted from power center and um, in, in, in different ways the impact and glory of the Catholic Church were declining and uh, nobody is taking charge blindly everybody is questioning and out of these questions they are gradually taking the rights and wrongs that's a great progress of Renaissance thinking a golden age of English literature commenced in 1485 and lasted until 1660. Uh, Mallory's Arthur, Arthur was among the first works to be printed by William Caxton. From that time on, readership were vastly multiplied. The growth of the uh, middle class, the continuing development of the trade, the new character, the thoroughness of education for lay people and the widening horizons of exploration gave a fundamental new impetus and directions to literature and new type of literature with life is born. Renaissance humanists were of the view that humanity and society could be improved through any kind of education based on a study of the classics. Here are a few great humanists we can name. Francesco Petrarch, known as Petrarch, Boccaccio, Leonardo Bruni, then Lorenzo Bhala, English theologian, John Collett, German poet, Condat Celtis, German theologian Martin Luther, who condemned uh, some of the basic teachings of the Catholic Church. Humanism that came to Italy rather early, slowly spread to France and then made its presence felt in England. The impact of humanism was not felt in English literature as it was immature of that initial stage. We must remember that. A literary style in part modeled or on that of ancient soon become a self-conscious preoccupation of English poets and prose uh, in England um, two significant books that uh, I like to mention one is Utopia by Sir Thomas More and another by Bacon in Studio Magna during this period attend European reputation of these uh, the first I must mention is Sir Thomas More's the most remarkable his Latin prose narrative um, uh, Utopia that I have just told was published in 1560. Satirizes the irrationality of inherited assumptions about private property and money and follows Plato in deflowering the failure of kings to make use of the wisdom of philosophers. Um, Thomas More's book describes a distant nation organized on purely reasonable principles and named Utopia. Uh, what is Utopia? This is geek for nowhere. The two greatest innovators of the new rich style of Renaissance poetry in the last quarter of the 16th century were Sir Philip Sidney and Edmund Penser, both humanistically educated Elizabethan courtiers. Sydney, a universally recognized as the model Renaissance gentleman, inaugurated this kind of um, sonnet writing or sonnet sequence writing that is popularly called sonnet cycle. And, and in his Astrobe and Stella, which was written in 1582 and published in 1591, in this kind of work, he celebrated his idealized love 
for Fennel of Deferex, the daughter of Walter Deferex, the first Earl of Essex. These lyrics, uh, these lyrics, in fact, uh, these lyrical poems, uh, the kind of sonnet or love lyrics, profess uh, to see in her, in, in, in Elizabeth Boyle, an ideal of womanhood that uh, in the platonic sense, in idealization of the beloved remained a flavored motive in much of the poetry and drama of the late 16th century most probably has been coined from this type of idealization. The greatest monument to that idealism broadened uh, to include all features of the moral life in Spencer's uncompleted Fairy Queen, um, book 1 to 3 particularly and later in book 4 to 6. It is entirely typical of the impulse of the Renaissance in England that in this work Spencer tried to create out of the inherited English elements of Arthurian romance and partly medieval style a noble epic that would make the national literature the equal to those of ancient Greece and Rome and of Renaissance Italy. On the other hand, the poetry of John Donne and the other so-called metaphysical poets um, carried the metaphysical style of uh, heights of daring, complexity and ingenuity. Donne's followers, George Herbert, carefully constructed uh, religious lyrics. Other members of the metaphysical school are Henry Vaughan and Richard Crasso. Uh, notably, we cannot miss Andrew Marvel too. So these kind of writers or these kind of uh, metaphysical writers uh, made the simple things complex but this is artistic complexity and that's the very new way of uh, writing poetry. Uh, most interestingly with grand simplicity and poetic power, Milton narrated in Paradise Lost which was published in 1667 a way to justify the ways of God to man and to express the central Christian truths of freedom. Sin and redemption as he conceived them. His elegy, Lycidas, which was published in 1637, Paradise Regained in 1671, and the classically patterned tragedy Samson Agonistus in 1671 similarly reveals astonishing uh, poetic power and grace under the control of a profound mind. The drama of the English Renaissance was the result of a remarkable outburst of energy. Obviously, it is a Renaissance spirit. The works of its greatest representative, William Shakespeare, have achieved worldwide renown. A large number of comedies, tragedies, and examples of intermediate tragic comedies were produced. So, when we are talking about Renaissance drama, the first thing that comes is the Spanish tragedy by Thomas Keat and a, a later this kind of um, psychologically more matured sophisticated revenge kind of drama that came in Shakespeare's Hamlet. So both these tragedies uh, are matured uh, Renaissance ideology of uh, individuality. Uh, in, a, in, 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 in the tragedies of Christopher Marlowe um, we can have Tamil the Great uh, the Edward II, um, such as uh, the Dr. 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 Foster's, the tragical history of Dr. Foster's, and the Geo Malta. These are all remarkable primarily for, primarily for their daring depictions of world shattering characters who strive to go beyond the normal human limitations as uh, the Christian medieval ethos had conceived. So, uh, these kind of uh, dramas are like of a way to break the rules or see beyond the boundaries. So these are typically Renaissance ideologies. English literature was not a reflection of national sentiments in the preceding centuries of the dark middle ages as it was translation and adaptation oriented. Even Chaucer was essentially French. It was very difficult for England to free herself from the cycle of the cult of the past. While in France, Renaissance was aristocratic, uh, it was 
democratic in England and concerned with uh, the more of the people of the Elizabethan masses. In the English Renaissance, long-standing beliefs were tested, they were verified and um, it, it, a, a new kind of a culture was created where everything has been questioned and verified. It was a period of intellectual ferment that prepared the ground for the thinkers and scientists. Then as the thinkers used classical precedents to preserve and defend the concept of uh, republicanism and human freedom. These ideas were a permanent impact on the course of English constitutional theory. Now, one thing you should remember is that the continuity of those principles are still on. The Romantic movement that comes later also started with, with this kind of solid base that Renesa has prepared. The lecture goes too long and nevertheless if you have any suggestions uh, drop a comment, a like, share, subscribe and you can also find my lecture in an essay article in my blog www.ordhendude.blogspot.com link I have shared in the description. Thanks, bye bye and if I get the opportunity I will discuss a Renaissance approach in separate segment later. Bye bye for now. Thanks for watching.